Hello and welcome to Well with Dell. If this is your first time visiting us, we hope you enjoy yourself. If you haven't been here before, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Dr. Jerry Del Canton. On our program, we like to discuss a multitude of topics, most importantly ones you will find useful and will help you live a healthier and happier life. Today on the program, we're going to be talking about conditions that may be coming from your spine, specifically the cervical spine. When we look at this model here, you can see that the vertebrae, which are stacked on top of one another, from the straight on view should be perfectly straight. From the side view, so if this spine was standing in this direction, we want to see a series of curvatures in the spine, a nice arch in the neck, an arch in the mid back, and then a nice curvature in the lower back, which will help support the hips and the rest of the pelvis. When we look at the spine, the brain sits up here and sends messages up and down the spinal cord, which you can see by that yellow structure in between the vertebrae. When we look at the curvatures from the side view, and this is what we're gonna discuss uh, today because this is one of the most common things that people walk into the office with, is headaches, neck pain, and pain in between the shoulder blades that is derived from misalignments in the cervical spine. So when we look at this guy, this guy's lost his normal curvature. We wanna focus on getting that curvature back in the neck. When it loses that normal curvature, the spine becomes very unstable as it tries to support the neck uh, and the head. So a little bit more in depth here, take a look at this red blood vessel that's traveling down between the vertebrae. This is called the vertebral artery, and it supplies a lot of uh, blood to the brain at the base of the brain. So this is why a lot of times you may have heard people that have headaches it's, and they feel like it's coming from their neck. Sometimes when the neck vertebrae become misaligned, we call that a subluxation. When they become subluxated, the blood vessels can become interfered with and may alter the amount of blood flow to the brain, oftentimes resulting in migraines um, and other vascular type headaches. So how do we evaluate this? One of the main things to evaluate the neck is, of course, through an examination, palpation, and motion movement testing. On top of that, we like to perform x-rays. So let's take a look at what a normal x-ray looks like in a normal curvature in the neck, as opposed to someone that has lost the curvature in the neck. So when we evaluate the cervical spine on an x-ray, this view here is the lateral cervical view. When we look at the spine, as you can see, the person's mouth is this way, so they're facing in this way, in this direction, standing sideways. And this is obviously the skull, and these are the seven vertebrae in the neck the first one, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Notice this person has a relatively normal curvature and their head is situated behind the neck. So we're gonna use what we use to evaluate the neck and its curvatures. We start off by placing a dot at the posterior inferior aspect of the seventh vertebral body. And then we go upwards the back middle part of the bodies up to the second vertebrae and then we take a vertical line to make sure that we do it the same way each time and we strike it up from the C7 vertebrae. The next thing that we do is we take our curvature mark and we connect it from here into where the vertical line intersects the C1 vertebrae. In this picture, you can see that the vertebral body are mostly lined up on the correct arch and the line, the vertical line, now we'll use it for its second purpose and it's to take it and put it onto this spot right here. See that, that's the ear. So that's the center of weight bearing. So if we drop a plumb line from the ear straight on down, the back of the head weighs the same as the front of the head. So now the head is properly supported behind the back part of the neck where the strongest structures are called the pillar. And that's for strength and support. The next thing that we look at, and I'm just gonna get this out of the way. Actually, one more thing. This right here should also line up right on that dot right there. So you can see we're talking very, very minor amount shifted forward, maybe a couple, a couple of millimeters, that's all. But to just, uh, so you can view this a little bit better, we're gonna take this out of the way and 
show you what the first vertebrae should look like. So the first vertebrae is the vertebrae that holds up the skull and blood vessels pass through this as it goes up into our brain. The next line that we use is a horizontal angle line. And we go from the back of the first vertebrae through the front of the first vertebrae. And you can see that measurement is 28.04. A normal measurement is anywhere from 27 to about 28 and a half. Um, and that's going to allow for proper blood flow and nerve flow to come through the upper part of the neck into the brain. So this is a very, very healthy near normal spine. Uh, this is a lady who is 47 years old. And um, um, for the most part, it's, it's a pretty healthy spine. So on the next picture, we're going to look at what a loss of that normal curvature looks like. Now, when we compare the image on the right, this is that of a 26-year-old woman. We're going to do the same analysis that we did with the patient on the left as we start at the bottom of the vertebral body of the C7 vertebrae and the center of the vertebrae traveling upwards. Now, with this one, we're going to put this line, the vertical line on here, right first, and then we're going to put the curvature on it next just to make sure that we're using the exact same coordinates each time. And once again, for, in fact, let me show you this part right now. Remember how we talked about the ear over here that we use for our vertical line? So if we drop that right down from there, we see that that's supposed to line up with that dot. Well, when we put it over here, let's just repurpose this one right here and we'll shift that over to her ear. And when we drop that down from the ear hole, you can see that the weight of the head is now in the front of the neck. And when we measure that, now we're talking 48, almost 49 millimeters. So we're talking almost two inches of forward head posture in, in a neutral posture. Now, uh, if this woman puts her head down, if she works at a desk, which she does, she's gonna get an increasing amount of stress and strain in the back of the neck and ultimately down in between the shoulder blades and can actually affect the lower back as well. So let's go back up to that first vertebrae. And if you remember, it's supposed to be approximately 28 degrees. We go over and measure this one out from the back of the first vertebrae through the front. We are at about approximately three and a half degrees. Uh, we find a lot of times patients that are under 10 degrees are our headache sufferers. Um, this one happens to be a headache sufferer. In fact, I want to point out one other thing. When we lose the curvature in the neck, the muscles get extremely tight. And if you look up here, you can see what used to be part of the muscles, where it attaches to the base of the skull. This is called an enthesophyte. And so the muscle that was once attached, you notice how you don't see it. You see more of a smoother transition on this one. Whereas on this one, there's a little bit of a, uh, what we call an enthesophyte. So that tells us that there's a lot of stress on here. Now, this is not a problem. This is nothing to be alarmed about, but it is a sign that there is too much stress on the musculature in the back of the neck. So once again, as the weight of gravity comes down all day long, it puts a lot of pressure, not only up on the upper neck where there is now an instability, but also as we come down here, you can see that the head is significantly forward, going to put a, an increasing amount of stress on the front of the vertebrae when it's supposed to be on the back of the vertebrae. Um, with this person, we'll probably start to see left uncorrected. We'll start to see some degenerative changes here. We'll start to see some spurring that occurs in the anterior part of the neck. Um, fortunately, this person's young and we can correct this, uh, but, um, but uh, it's definitely gonna need to be uh, corrected. So that's the comparison of a healthy neck of a 47-year-old woman and a, a neck of a 26-year-old uh, who needs a little bit of work in her neck. So, so we hope you found that useful. Um, and interesting. A lot of people, when I'm going through the x-rays with patients, they really do find it sometimes alarming, uh, but they always like to see at least what's going on. So if you're experiencing any problems that you think may be coming from your neck, 
Um, a chiropractor is the perfect choice. A chiropractor who takes x-rays that does an evaluation is where you want to go uh, because uh, seeing is believing and uh, I think when you can see what you're going to work on, you see what you're dealing with. Uh, research suggests that if a patient knows uh, what's wrong with them, they're going to get better faster and stay well longer. So that's our advice for you today. Find a wonderful chiropractor that does x-rays and a good evaluation and take some time with you. And I think you'll be, uh, be happy with the results.